I'm going to talk a little bit about photographing cityscapes at night, which this is actually one of my favorite types of photography to do on my own. So I'm pretty excited to tell you about this stuff. So first of all, getting a technically perfect exposure is really, really, really hard because of the high contrast between the really dark night sky and the super bright uh, lights that are happening in a city. So uh, I usually use a darker shot and then either light in certain areas and or composite bright elements uh, like the moon back in. Now something that's really important is to use a tripod to avoid you, uh, the high ISO because they're going to have a lot of uh, grain or noise in the darkest area of your images anyways. Um, but having a tripod will mean that you can keep your ISO as low as possible and get some really nice shots. So for that technically perfect shot I was talking about earlier, here's an example. Now this is actually um, a 27 shot panorama taken in New York City at one of the World Trade Center sites. And 27 shots because there was nine shots down here at the bottom, nine shots for the middle, uh, nine shots for the top, well, and I guess 28. Then I took another shot um, of the moon and added that back in in Photoshop because just regularly this whole area was just too bright. Okay, and so I had to actually manually piece together all of this area with people's names in it. Um, but it was a challenging shot. Um, now if I had a super wide angle lens, I definitely could have used that instead, but I didn't have a super wide angle lens. And if you remember from some of our uh, lens lecture earlier in the semester, some of those lenses can be really, really expensive. So I used what I had and created the shot that I wanted to for this. Okay. Oh, well here I have says 18 shot, but I'm pretty sure it was 27. <laughs> I'll have to go back and check. Anyways, um, so another thing is that you, you can use a small aperture and you saw this in the Golden Gate shots, um, to get the street lights looking like stars. So an example of this is right down here. This is here in Fresno. I believe this was on West and Clinton. Um, but that small aperture creates these bright, these little sun star looking type of things. And it'll depend on the lens on how many beams your star has. Um, slow shutter speeds will show movement like streaks of light from passing cars or people walking by. And a good way to gauge how long your exposure needs to be is to count how many seconds it takes a car to move through your scene. So for this, you can see there's these streaks of light and that's exactly what happened. Uh, cars were going by, it was a really slow shutter speed. So I didn't get the actual car in the photo, but I got the streaks of light as they were going by, okay? Now, night scenes with no visible movement, um, as a rule, tend to feel calmer and more serene, though especially for those landscape type of night shots. Slow shutter speeds usually make water look calm because the ripples and waves aren't showing. And sometimes the waves can look ghostly or like fog on the water, kind of like how we talked to about with the uh, Golden Gate Bridge shots I showed you in the landscape and dusk and dawn overview. So here are some of my favorite shots taken around Fresno, um, San Francisco, Washington DC and such. So here I said, I'd already told you that this was, um, you know, at night we have the cars going by and because I have a really small aperture, all of these lights look like little star beams. Okay, this is here in the Fulton Mall and we do have a bit of movement in here. Uh, just a bit, but it does feel a lot calmer, right, than the more hectic feeling of this one. Okay, this one is something that you can do with the slow shutter speed in your phones. Um, some of my friends, we were out for art hop, and hey, I told them I'm going to set my camera down on the uh, trunk of a car and put a really slow shutter speed, and they went with their phones facing towards the camera and moved around, and because they were moving faster, um, they were not actually in the shot, but the light trails are was what left. Tower Theater, with all the light 
lights from the cars going by. And this is a view of Fresno that a lot of us don't get to see very often from the Pacific Southwest building downtown, which is the tallest building in Fresno at 15 stories. Uh, San Francisco during the blue hour on one of their little piers. And from the same spot, but moving around and getting some different areas of the light. And you can see here where the water, there is no ripples, there's no waves, because it was such a slow shutter speed that just smooths it all out. More San Francisco. Uh, here's a New York shot. Now with this one, this is a tribute to um, John Lennon, one of the Beatles, if you guys know who that is. And this is a little tribute in Central Park and someone had left a candle, but it was so dark it was really hard to find a great photo. So what did I do? I asked my husband to stand over here off the side with the flashlight on his phone on. And so he shined it on over here to light this right up. And one of the reasons I can tell that that's what happened also, if I hadn't remembered, was you can see there's a slight shadow coming off of this candle over here. So the light was bright enough to light this up, but not so bright that it overpowered the, the little bit of the candle there. Okay, again with slow shutter speed so that we get the nice um, streaks of light coming from the cars. Some Washington DC shots, same technique where I wanted to get this 1908 from a bridge but it was really dark. So again, asked my husband, hey, hold your flashlight and light this up for me. Now especially with touristy spots, um, I like to go at night because there are less people walking around and it's a little bit easier for me to photograph. And these are some of the various memorials. This is the FDR memorial and some of his quotes. This was also part of the FDR memorial and you can see this, um, there's braille actually on the walls. So a really nice addition. And again, I'm looking at, as I'm walking around that night, I'm looking at um, getting my foreground elements and background elements, which a lot of time was the Washington Monument. You could see it from almost everywhere in the city. And here's an example of going, um, having a horizontal shot, I'm sorry, a vertical shot versus a horizontal shot of the same subject. Sometimes the light can be a little finicky, so we have this really nice white light here and orange light over here. So for this shot I decided that it was a bit distracting, and so I turned it to black and white. Vietnam Memorial, now if you remember from composition, using leading lines. So here is the main subject, it's the closest to the camera, it's the most in focus. And then the leading lines of the wall and the lights take you to my background subject, the Washington Monument. It's a World War II monument. And a panorama. And as you can see, it was long shutter speeds again. You can see that both of the flags are showing definite movement. Okay, now that was all, those old photos were all done with tripods, but you can hand hold your camera um, at night and you can get some decent shots. You can open up your aperture as wide as possible so you can use a fast shutter speed. For extra stability, you can lean on something uh, for support and what we call cradling your camera by using your right hand to hold the camera body and change your settings and your left hand to hold the lens steady and then press your arms really tight against your body to kind of give yourself some more support. 
So here are some shots from around Las Vegas, and these were all handheld. You'll find in some touristy spots that um, you can't even bring out a tripod, so you have no choice but to hand hold your camera. Go to a higher ISO, large aperture, so you can go to a slightly faster shutter speed. Um, So some shots on Fremont Street, whole lot of people probably wouldn't even want to bring a tripod out here because you don't want to get knocked over. And like I said, they don't usually allow you in uh, high traffic areas to pull out a tripod. Now this is a technique I, I tried doing where um, I was following this guy and trying to walk at the same speed as him so that he was more clear in the photo while everyone else went into a blur. Another instance of using this time a flash to light up what is closest to me that was in the dark while the background is bright. And yet another thing you could do is hand hold your camera but stay with the long shutter speed and move around. And you can create all kinds of fun photos. So this is at the Hard Rock Cafe in um, was at Universal Studios in Orlando and here's just a regular shot at night but then I went for a slow shutter speed and played with moving around zooming in and out so this is zooming in and out where I start I click the shutter and then zoom in really fast and it creates this motion going back and forth this time I moved the camera clicked it and then moved it to the side very quickly moved it up and down while zooming same thing, you're going to get something different every time, and so it can be a lot of fun to play around with. Zooming in and out again, this is the same sign, but closer and then further. Moving side to side, and a sweeping motion. So there's all kinds of really fun stuff you could do with night photography because of the light, right? Photography is all about capturing light. And when you have slow shutter speeds and movement, you can create all kinds of interesting images and compositions. Now in my lecture, um, I have added some extra stuff for you guys who are interested in this. Videos on night photography, uh, car trails, tips for shooting with slower shutter speeds, light painting, and even more light painting. And this is a really fun video um, about Stephen Wilkes, who's an artist who stays in one place and shoots over, um, over time, so does like a time lapse, shooting every few minutes, every hour, and then photoshops all of those images together into one so you can get an idea of one place and how it is from day to nighttime. So check out these extra videos if they seem interesting to you. Um, I bet you'll find some really fun stuff for you to try with you and your friends and your phones.